Good morning, everyone. So today I'm super, super excited to launch this new set uh, from Tonic Studios for their Stamp Club. Uh, Tonic has sponsored the video and they did send these items free of charge from my review and all opinions are my own. And any links I have in the description box will be affiliate links, which means I'll make a small commission if you were purchase items to those links. All right, all that aside, I predict this is gonna sell out. How can it not? Look at this. Oh my gosh, I have been so excited about this one. Super cute. Um, so really quickly about the Stamp Club. It is not a monthly membership club like uh, Tonic's Craft Kit that uh, you can pick up individually, but it's usually a monthly membership or even a quarterly membership. Um, this one, you pick it up as it goes along. So it's launched today, it's ready today, right now, if um, you would like to pick this up. Um, just adorable you guys so there are photopolymer stamps and let me show you the stamps first um and then we'll look at the dies oh look at the little rock <laughs> i just noticed that i was like is that a cupcake it's a, <laughs> a cupcake top it's a little uh rock or you know boulder i suppose um there's like little stars we have our little fairies and if i haven't mentioned it's called i love you very much and i was saying i love it very much because this is so cute um cute little gals here their little sweet faces and this one looks like she's very happy and like she's sitting a little bit so I'm assuming we're gonna put her on there um, there is you know the, your background kind of stamping you know it's more of like a silhouette with the um, little vine here our dragonfly like a little bling <laughs> um, accent there that's so cute oh you know why because you can put that over her little um, scepter or wand however you want to look at that one uh, beautiful flower that you can use you know without even having the fairies there another little flower top your little mushroom and then it has um different sentiments here and i did leave this in the pack i know a lot of times i'll take it out because it's not like carrier anyway so it's still gonna be shiny so this is fine we have a have a fairy we have hey friend you sparkle sending magic your way happy birthday you're such a fun guy i love you very much make a wish and wishing you a magical day so cute. Oh, and then nice day is up here with another little dragonfly. So adorable. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah, that reminds me. Okay. And then um, on the back here, oh, those are really cool. Um, so, you know, this one has its own thing going on here, the stamp, and then there's a die for it. But then we also have a die just for, you know, uh, making more foliage, which is really nice. Um, oh my goodness, this one I am going to take out because there's a lot going on on here. Let's see if I can get this out of here. So we have to cut the um, that flower, the you know pretty much everything. The mushroom. You have your little boulder. You have your dragonfly, the little dragonfly, all the little gals. Of course, we have the words magic, R and U, or you are magic. Um, the little mushroom back here, and this. I this I was very excited to see. That's really cool because that's just something you can add to lots of um, different projects. But let me see here. This guy. It cuts just about three and seven eighths of an inch by five and an eighth or so. So it mats perfectly into um, a standard two side card, which is really nice. Um, same dimensions off or all around the edges, you know. So um, I, we're just gonna get to it. These are just adorable. So I'm gonna put these to the side for a moment because we do need to color our fairies in. And today I have some new items that we can do that with. And it's the, um, the new Nuvo alcohol markers, alcohol ink markers. I know a lot of times I say it quickly and people think I'm saying alcoholic markers. Alcohol ink markers, okay. And um, so there's a few different collections here. Uh, full disclosure, I don't really know if um, they're launching today or if they're going to be available soon. Um, I'll have that info in the description box, of course. So either there'll be a link there or more information. Um, but quickly, I want to show these uh, collections to you. So the ones I have in front of me are the Midtone Collection, the Essential Collection, and the um, Bright and Dark Collection. I already know people, I know you get ladies, um, people in general, when you buy markers, you look at them and you're like, oh, I love these colors, you know? <laughs> so you're gonna look at that. But there are sometimes where you need colors like grays and browns, and I know it's not the most glamorous thing, but you literally, you really need them. So I know just looking at this, if I saw this, I would say, okay, I'm gonna get this bright and dark because of all the colors that are in here. So pretty. Uh, Tuscan teal, just, oh, I love it. The French navy with the ultramarine, I just, it's gorgeous. Um, and then we have, and that's just a quick peek, I know. And these are just some, um, swatch sheets I had requested just so I can put them on here and show you. Um, essential collection here. A little sweeter, a little more subdued. Very sweet. It looks like there's some skin tones in there. I would say there's some skin tones here in the mid-tone collection. And these are mid-tones right here. 
Um, yeah, so like even within that, you can see this hair and skin tones 12 pack. So that's kind of what's going on here. Uh, the muted mint tones, the perfect pastels, and so anyway. Um, so I just want to show you kind of the colors that are included here. And I do have a handy list of which ones blend together to make your perfect three color blend. So we'll talk a little bit more about that in um, a minute, but as we get to using it, right? So let me open one of the markers just so you can see kind of what they're about. Oh, I do want to mention this collection, the um, Essential has a pitch black, which I always say, I know it's sometimes hard to blend with black, but I usually blend it with the grays. Um, and then I just use a little bit of black because it can be very, very overpowering, especially depending on what you're using it for or where you're using it. So uh, this is nice. And it also has a blender because I know a lot of you guys like a blender pen. It is in here, so I wanted to point that out. And so let's look at the pen. Again, it's the kind of thing where you put it down. It's not going to roll away unless you push it like I did there, but you put it down and it'll be there for you to grab. And I know a lot of times we're going between colors, so that's just a nice feature. Um, it does have the same uh, nibs, I believe, that the Nouveau mar uh, markers had before. I actually have, well, I have some here, but that's okay. I'll just <laughs> go with these guys. On the side that's marked with like a little gray band, you have your nib. And it's a, it's a longer nib, as you can see. Sometimes uh, companies have like a really short nib or a little tiny nib. I just want to see, yeah, it's just a little longer. Which is kind of nice, you can see better what you're doing under there. <laughs> a lot of times it's so close, you're like, okay, well. Um, and on the other side, it has a sketch, um, the chisel nib. And I know famously, I don't normally use chisel nib sides, um, but we're going to try to use it today and put some good use in that. But again, this is what helps you color a large area. Um, or a large space. So that's probably why I don't use it too often because I'm making cards, I'm making, you know, coloring tiny little things. Um, but today we're gonna try it out. So let me grab some paper and we are gonna get started. Okay guys, so to start off, I grabbed a few um, purples uh, and then some greens. Now, um, you can look at them and kind of try them out. Obviously you have your swatches and see which ones kind of go together. Um, I do have a handy list of which ones uh, do go together. And so, um, of course, unless you have them with you, maybe this doesn't make a lot of sense, but I do want to show you like this purple color family is 432, which is Violet Breeze, 434, which is Wild Thistle, and then 438 being the darkest one, uh, Grape Shake. I'm gonna make a background and I'm gonna cut it out with the dyes and then I'm gonna make another background that's going to be for the pretty little leaves like this part. Um, so this is what the idea I'm having, so hopefully that works out. So this outer frame cuts by itself, and you can also do the insert part. So for the background, I'm going to use purples, because I think that's going to be really pretty. And this top part, I'm going to do the same thing in greens, and then we're going to cut them out and see what happens. I think it'll look lovely. Um, I usually start with lighter colors and then go to the darkest, but with this one, I think I'm going to start at the very top. This piece of paper, I'm going to cut it down in a minute, so um, it's over four inches wide and then as long as the paper was. I didn't trim that part down. And I'm not going to color the whole whole thing, but a good amount of it. Enough to uh, fit that dye, basically. So I'm just going to take the darkest purple and start coloring. It's going to look messy, and it's going to look even messier when I <laughs> do the next color. Um, but again, this is just the way you use that sketch side. I think we're okay there. And that was the darkest the grape shake, and then I'm going to go into Wild Thistle. And normally when you're using alcohol ink markers, you are going to color so much and so long that it goes through to the other side of the paper, like really saturated. So um, I'm just getting color down right now. And I'm gonna go back over this. I know it looks like a hot mess, but it'll be fine. I hope. <laughs> and then we have the uh, Violet Breeze. And this one as far down as I can. So I'm just going to continue doing this. I know maybe it's not the most exciting thing um, until the paper is as saturated as I would like for it to be. Go back over this area here. And just, I think that's probably as long as it needs to be. Let me think. Oh, you know what? We have a clear carrier, so it's easy to kind of see through. Yeah, that's about good. Okay, so now this is still the same color. I'm going back up in here. Going to go into that midsection, maybe blend it out a little better. And what I want you to see is on the back, it should be pretty saturated, and that is not quite saturated enough. So I'm going to go back to that middle color and go from here. And of course, it gets much more intense, as you can see, as you add color. 
And you can do this as much or as little as you want. You know, if you like the, the way it looked, you don't have to keep adding color. And then go back into that darkest one, kind of. I'm gonna do the exact same thing with the green and I'll tell you which green colors I'll, I'll be using. And then get that lightest color back. Kind of come in here and blend those. So with any, you know, alcoholic markers, the more color that you add, the more saturated it's going to be. Okay, and then one last little fun thing I want to do is just drop some alcohol on this. And um, this is regular paper. This is just stamping paper. As you can see, I can probably still add more color, but I wanted to be kind of muted, so I think I'm happy where I am. Um, this is just alcohol <laughs> in a bottle. Um, you can pour some out. I, this is the alcohol I use to, like, clean my packages and things as they, <laughs> things as they arrive. So... I'm just dipping this loose brush in here and I'm gonna pat, pat, pat and let that do some fun stuff. It's kind of like if you add water to, um, you know, your water-based inks. And you can leave that there, let it do its thing, or you can come in and take it up. It doesn't really come up. What happens is, and this is what's really cool, hopefully you can kind of see that little pattern coming out. It pushes it to the back, just like a blender pen. Um, you know, I didn't discuss too much about the blender pen. We'll talk about that when we're actually using um, coloring in our little gals, but, um, so that's fun. That's, I think that's all I'm gonna do for that. Let me put a couple more splatters maybe over here. I'm gonna do the exact same thing on this piece of paper here with um, these greens. So I have um, this green color family here. We have bamboo leaf is 413, 415 being pine grove, and 417 being hunter green. And I'm just gonna plop those down the same way from dark to light, and I'll be back. Okay, so I've done that one, and I try to concentrate on the edges. If you really want to, you don't even have to color this middle section because a lot of it's gonna be cut away, but there's enough of it that I was like, well, I'll just color the whole thing. But you know, if you wanna save some marker, you really don't have to pay attention to any of this middle part. And then if you miss anything, you can just touch it up, you know? Okay, so again, this one I left a little bit messier because the blend doesn't really matter so much on this one. We're just trying to get color and it's barely going to be no noticeable, you know, after uh, the blend will, after you cut out this beautiful thing here. So I'm going to put that to the side, put this to the side, and let's pick a little lady to be in here. I think I'm going to go with this gal just so that, you know, we're focusing on her and then we have that beautiful background. So um, let's go with this little lady. Let me see if my piece of paper is big enough. Yep. And then, you know, we'll do the stamping and other things later or with some of these other items. But for now, we're gonna stamp the little fairy so we can color her in. And again, photopolymer stamps smell amazing. And the first time you use a stamp, it's okay to, you know, uh, stamp it off, try it out first before you actually just go for it. Like right now, I can do that. and She looks pretty good, though. Um, usually, uh, photopolymer stamps have a dispersion layer, like a little stickiness, a little tacky layer. So you kind of, you can scrub it. You can stamp it off a few times and then go from there. Let me just... Aww. Lovely. Um, okay, so what I'm gonna do is pick some colors for her beautiful little dress, her little skin tone, and you know, go from there. I'll be back. Okay, I think I'm ready. I was trying out some of the color combinations. Um, and hopefully I don't get this part mixed up here. I think we have kind of little, okay. So for her skin tones, um, you know, in the pack that I had mentioned, the, the uh, mid-tone collection has within it the hair and skin tones. Um, I just grabbed two colors because it's a small area anyhow, so I think these will go really well together. We have brown sugar and cantaloupe. And so I always start, I'm talking, starting with brown sugar because that's a little deeper color. And I'm gonna go like in the sh shady areas right here. Maybe a little bit down here. Usually I start off with the, the light color and then I blend into the dark color and then back, but um, this is such a small area. I don't mind just kind of starting in here and bringing it down. And this is um, cantaloupe. And we'll continue to work it. Yeah, you know, just kind of come in here and again, the more color you add, the deeper the color comes out. So you're supposed to do enough so that it comes back through the back and you know, I think that's probably good enough, but I can keep adding more. And this is just a choice I made. 
Um, and then her little face, same thing. You know, this time on her face because it's a little bit larger. I'll start with the um, cantaloupe. We also have sweet vanilla and I think, and garlic clove. <laughs> All those colors are kind of like skin tones. I'm going with a, a deeper one here. And her little eyes do have a little white spot that I would like to keep white. So for now, I'm just adding some color, leaving a little bit there. And then I'll come in with this guy just under her hairline. And like I said, I, I work on this kind of thing. I just add some color. That's what my thing is. I just add a little color under her nose there. I'm not too technical. And if I do obliterate that little white of her eye, what we can do is just bring in a gel pen and dab that back in there. Okay. And since I have some pinks out, I have this tiger lily color. I can give her some little cheeks. A little color there, maybe a little color in her little lips. So cute. Oh my gosh. So I would do the same thing for her neck and her little hands. Um, oh, one thing I didn't mention I like to do for... Um, Wings is just use a blue, like the lightest blue. I'm just gonna choose a blue. I have all the packs sitting in front of me and open. That one's a little bit too bright. Let's go maybe Skylight. Let's try this one. Yeah, so Skylight Blue number 425. And all I do is kind of go, oh, I have to color her ear, is go around in here. Just kind of follow the lines. And that way it looks like see-through, a little gossamer. And like, you didn't forget to color it. It's just you didn't color it, that's all. So I just do that for all of them. I'll just follow along and give them a little. If you want to come in with an even lighter color and kind of blend some in, you know, you can do that. But it kind of goes away on its own. It just blends into the paper. Um, what else would you guys like to know? I know you want to know probably hair. I'm not, um, you know, a guru in this coloring hair, but I do know a little something. So for hair tones, I'm going to use brown sugar again, which I actually use in her skin tone, and then hazelnut and vintage walnut. So this is the deepest tone for her hair. And I believe, um, let me see between these two, hazelnut is the mid-tone. Yeah. So you can start off with the darkest color, and you know, we always do our flicks, or sometimes what you can do is just follow where, you, you know, her hair's parted here, so I'm gonna put some of that dark brown in here. I'm kind of flicking as I do this. It's not the biggest deal, you'll see in a minute. Uh, wherever you think the dark parts should be, just kind of follow in there and just add some of that. Maybe under here. And then I'll do the other side there. And then you can go into the mid-tone, which again, yes, is hazelnut. And I can expand from that, just flick, flick, flick up. And even at the tips and go backwards. I'll do something about that. I like to work in sections and then take that lightest tone and kind of match it up. And it can also flick from here. And you can leave an area kind of open that makes it look shiny. But you know, it's up to you however you want to do it. shiny there and I'll keep working in sections just like that just adding the color in um, and then you can blend over it again if you still need to blend some more um, one last thing is her little dress is gonna be this really pretty um, kind of coral color family I think this one is called coral reef and it's 373 pink grapefruit 375 plum tomato and 374 tiger lily in this order, 373, 374, 375. What I do like about the numbers is they are in ascending or descending order, however you want to look at it, from light to dark, dark to light. So whatever that mid number is, is always going to be the middle color. I have some symptoms, yeah, systems, excuse me. Um, it depends because, you know, as they're creating colors, they might come back and put another color in and then, okay, that one actually goes after the, you know, so um, this works out. Um, and again, I'll probably do inspections because it's like a little, a little, um, petal here. I'm going to do this outside color, most of it in. I'm going to leave that middle section just open. See, there's some white in there. And then I'll go into the darkest, which on this one is plum tomato. And just put in some of the darker tones here and there, maybe down here. It's a very small section, so I don't need too much color. And then go into the mid-tone, which is that tiger lily. And then come back in and blend it all out. 
I left that middle section uncolored, so when I did add more color, it's going to be lighter just in that little area than when I went over the same color again with this same. So that's what I'll do for her little dress and her whole body there. Blender pen. So this is more of an eraser, but it's it, it's not going to help you blend the colors. Like here I have some color blend a little bit. You, generally you don't come in and like, oh, I'm going to work this into this and into this. It doesn't really... That's not the purpose of it. I mean, it hardly did anything. What it does is it bleaches it out. So this is basically a colorless ink blender. It's whatever the uh, solution is that's in here without any color. So normally what people use this for is erasing. So like right here, I went outside her little foot a little bit. I don't know if you can see that. It's a very small amount. So what you do is just press your color blender until it goes through to the back side of the paper. That's all you're doing. Um, I hardly use it. I try not to use it, but um, that's all you're doing. Just hold on to it until the color goes back through. And it'll dry, because right now it looks like bluish. Um, and then that's it. So hopefully you can kind of see. It was a very small area, but just hold it in the area that you want to get rid of, and it'll push it through to the back of the paper, and then your ink is gone, basically. I mean, there's another little area right here, so I would just hold it down. And you still want to be careful with it because you don't want to um, smudge what you did do. But that's what it's for. It's more of a corrector than anything else. Okay, I will be right back. I'm all done. I mentioned if I obliterated the little brown of her eyes, or the white of her eyes, I would just come back in with a gel pen. So I'm just popping that little white back in there. And it just makes a huge difference. It just really makes her little eyes pop. Use a little green here. And when it's something so small like the little flowers, I just use one tone of yellow and just pop that on there. So she's good to go. If I was just um, making a scene and I had her here, what I would do is also take another light blue and just go around her whole little body. Just a little delicate tracing. Um, and that just makes it look really, really sweet. Uh, let me see how much this actually leaves around her. Cause maybe I'll do that just so that she looks a little, yeah, I can see there is gonna be some white space around her as you can see. So what I'm gonna do is just take that, like I said, and just go around her whole little body and just add a little something. It's easier to do it now before we cut than after we cut it out. So I'm just gonna go around and it just adds a little something. I just really love the way that works out. So I will be back. I'm just going to go around her whole little body. And hopefully you can kind of see how that looks compared to this side that has nothing. I'll be right back. Okay, so what I'm going to do is go ahead and trim her out. There's still going to be a little bit of a white edge, I think. But it'll look really sweet just with that little blue. And if you want to run this through a scrap piece of paper so you can make an aperture. So you can see exactly where you're going to cut. Um, you know, do that. I've shown many times how to do that in the past. But I think for now I'll be okay just looking through there. Making sure that doesn't move. So this is one thing we're gonna cut out. And I'm also going to run through um, just the outer piece, which, to cut this guy out, okay? And then I'm also going to use this plus the insert to cut out this beautiful vining area, oh, I love it. So I'll do that, obviously tape it down so it doesn't move and run that through too and I'll be right back. Okay guys, look at that. So yeah, that little blue just pops and looks really great. And look how pretty this is. I love that um, when you use your um, die cutting machine, it leaves that really nice little edge on your paper. So my idea here, and you know what? Oh, it'll work. So I should have paid attention to that. I wanted um, this to be a little bit, let me get this popped out, hold on. It's very delicate in there. I wanted the darker to be on the bottom so we have dark and light, light and dark, you know? So that'd be dark down here. So that was just a color preference and I should have paid attention to that. So it'd be more like this with the dark. But now I'm thinking maybe if I put dark down here and then the light, hmm, let's see. Maybe that's okay. Or maybe it's okay to keep it all dark up the top. Okay, either way. <laughs> all right, so um, what I'm gonna do is just clean this all out. I do have a piece of cardstock, just white cardstock here, and I cut it to four and a quarter inches wide off of an A2 size paper, so it's still 11 inches long, and I scored it at five and a half, so that way the card is oriented like this. I thought that'd be fun for this particular card. So what I'm going to do, yeah, is just clean out these little pieces that are in here. And then I'm just going to um, adhere these together. 
Um, and you know, you probably have enough edge you can make this into a shaker if you wanted to put a shaker card in here. Hmm. You know I love a shaker. Okay, I'll be right back. my arm, we'll do a shaker. So I have all my pieces here. I cut a piece of acetate down to about the same size, which is like three and three quarter inches by um, five. You could also use the die, the outer die, and cut the acetate down so it's exactly the same. I did notice I have a little piece there that was not colored, so I'm just going to bring that same green I was using earlier in and just uh, touch that up. And I'll just leave it like that. Okay. Um... So I'm going to glue this to this, and I'll adhere some foam on the very edges, and I'll be right back. Just real quick, when I say adhere this to this, I'm going to use my, Duvo, uh, my Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive. And, you know, on these pieces, I'm kind of just hitting some areas here and there. I'm not too concerned. I kind of like when leaves are kind of fun and free-flowing, so I don't really try to completely stick them down. But, you know, if you want to, then that's up to you. But just like that. Just a little something, of course, around the edge very well. And I'll adhere that to my acetate and then like I said I'll add foam strips all around the edge and I'll be back. Okay. So before I um, put this on here and stick her down I think what I'm going to do with her is, I've done this before long ago, um, just get a piece of thread so that she floats also since it's going to be a shaker you're going to shake it you might as well have some uh, fun with it and if I can find the beginning of this. So I do happen to have purple thread. If you don't have purple thread this is a great time to have if you have white, white thread, and just take like your um, chisel end there, hold your thread, you know, put it down on a scrap piece of paper and just run it through and it'll be purple. So, or whatever color is that you're trying to get. <laughs> I'm gonna put that on there. And so I'm gonna make this so that's stuck down on her. I'll use tape. Um, you can put some glue and tape if you think something's going to happen, but the tape should be good enough. I don't think people are going to be too rough with it, but you never know. So I'll put a good amount. Really holding that on. And then I'm going to adhere this in here. Maybe like this. Just tape that down too. This is going to get glued, so just want to make sure she's in the right spot. Probably pretty good. Bring it down a little bit more. Okay. And I'm just going to glue that down, and then we'll bring in our sequence and all that good stuff. I'm telling you, this set is just adorable. <laughs> If you wanted to put another mat behind this, you can definitely do that. I'm just going to do this. So I'm going to wait for this to set up, and I'll be right back. Okay, just putting some of these things away here. Um, so we're going to have that popped on there. And so all I'm going to do is just sprinkle a few of these little guys. I have some Nouveau uh, Rainbow Quartz Triangles, one of my favorite shapes, and the colors on this are just beautiful. I put a little more than I expected there. That's okay. And then some of these pink tutus. So cute. These are sequins. A little larger. So I'm not going to put too much of this. Um, just there to add a little color. Kind of play off her little dress. And I'm just going to take the um, backs off of this. And just stick it right down over the top. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, I just looked right over, lined it up, and did not push down until I was happy with the placement. I'm going to turn it over and give it a good squish, like I like to do. <laughs> and look at that. Oh, I love it. And she will move, you know, it just depends on what all is going on. <laughs> How cute. <laughs> I love it. There she goes. There she goes. All right. Super adorable. Okay, let me think as far as what I want to do about a sentiment. I think I'm going to do something, um, just a little something that's going to go here, but uh, I will be right back. Okay. You know, I have this little piece from the other day that I used um, my uh, banners and strips die set here, and it's this piece that cut out right here. We also have this little guy that would be really sweet. Hmm. 
Either way, I figured, well, I can use this little dude. And, you know, as I was looking at it to see which sentiment I would like, I'm like, oh, I could have used these guys right here to put some background, maybe stamp it in purple, tone on tone. Lots of ideas. Put some little dragonflies behind her. Oh, my goodness. And you know me, I'm almost thinking, should I open it up and do it? But it's okay. <laughs> All right. So we have Make a Wish. And I'm going to stamp it on here with some... Black uh, um, Nouveau Hybrid Ink. But, you know, if you want to do like a purple or a green or something else that matches, that's great too. And if it doesn't work out, I will stamp it again and then cut it again because this is different when you have it already cut and you're trying to look down it and just making sure you're centered and all that. Pretty good. All right. And I think I will pop this up. So let me get some dimension on this and um, we'll wrap it up. So all done. Such a cute set. So versatile. So much that you can do with it. I mean... I was kind of focusing on using the alcohol ink markers plus the uh, stamps in this one here, but oh, this is a little toadstool right here, as you can see. Um, I'm going to put this down over here, I think. You can even put it off the edge if you wanted. I think right there is cute. And there it is. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I have the links in the description box. Thank you so much, uh, Tonic, for sponsoring the video. Um, I do want to mention this little piece that cut out from the center. You can use this for something else. Um, and as you can see, I Focus the little white um, splotches, the alcohol um, splotches, around the edge because I knew that's where it was going to be. And you can still see them even if the you know die cut was so intricate there. You can still see the little spaces. So really fun way to use them. Um, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you all at the next one. Bye now.